Hello, and thank you for coming to watch today's session that covers an introduction of accounting changes and error corrections for cash basis governments. My name is Vivian Vandenberg, Assistant State Audit Manager with the Local Government Support Team here at the Office of the Washington State Auditor. On today's brief agenda, we'll cover the five whys of accounting changes and error corrections. We'll cover what the change actually is, why there's a change coming, whom does it affect, when the change will be effective, and where this change will have an effect. Let's start with sharing what the accounting changes are that this new accounting will cover. The two that this impacts are changes in accounting principle and changes to or within the financial reporting entity. Error corrections are also covered in this new accounting and reporting. They're in their own category though. The first one I'll cover are changes in accounting principle. Now, this will occur in cases that a government is switching from one generally accepted accounting principle to another or in cases that they're simply adopting a new accounting standard. Next, we have the changes to or within a reporting entity. These changes will show themselves in situations when a government is moving a fund from the primary government to a fiduciary fund or vice versa. And the final topic covered is error corrections. An error correction is necessary to be reported when there has been a mathematical mistake, a mistake in the application of an accounting principle, or the oversight or misuse of facts that existed at the time the financial statements were issued. Moving right along, let's talk about why the change is coming. So this new accounting and reporting is intended to provide consistent reporting throughout the state, regardless of your government type. Now that all governments will be accounting and reporting for each of these accounting changes and error corrections similarly, financial statements can be more consistently compared. The big question many have right now is whom does this affect? Well, it's gonna affect all of you. No matter your government type, if you have any of these types of transactions, this new accounting and reporting is going to affect you. Well, when will this change be effective for me? So the change is effective for fiscal years beginning after June 15th, 2023. So as follows, if your fiscal year end is 630, this change will be effective for your reporting year 7 1 2023 through 6 30 2024. Similarly, if you have an August 31st fiscal year end, this change will cover September 1st, 2023 through August 31st, 2024. Many of the local governments in the state of Washington have a fiscal year end of December 31st. So this change will be effective when you're reporting to us for January 1st, 2024 through December 31st of 2024. So where will this have an effect? Well, I'm here to tell you that there will be new bars codes under this new accounting and reporting, as well as different note disclosures when you have any of these situations that you're required to report to us. At this time, we have identified the new bars coding that will be available. Note that the code for prior period adjustments is being retired, and that code is being split out into what you see here. We will have one for a change in accounting principle. We'll have a different one for changes to or within the reporting entity, and an additional one for an error correction. I know I did say that there were note disclosures that will be required with this new accounting and reporting. At this time, we're really just asking you to stay tuned so that we can have a better prepared note disclosure example for you to view. Just to give you a little preview, 
there will be a new narrative requirement as well as a display requirement for your note disclosure. And in order to get you all started, we're asking that you really just keep an eye on our training and workshops page for more information or any future trainings that may come out regarding this new accounting and reporting. In the meantime, if you're out there looking for additional information, feel free to submit a help desk to our office or visit our website at sao.wa.gov.